Hey viewers, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Today I've got something pretty special. I've got a four-piece Pioneer lead system from the early 90s. It's absolutely gorgeous piece of, of kit. Um, it was assembled by a collector in our local area and we're, we had the privilege of, of, um, of featuring it in our videos and selling it for him on consignment. So today I'm gonna go over these four pieces, why they're so amazing. Um, why they went together because the model number is a little bit off um, it's gonna be around 15 minute video but before I jump in please 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 like and subscribe it helps us uh, keep motivated to bring you these videos if you like them and uh, also leave comments below I make tons of mistakes along the way please jump in let me know what you've got systems you like what you like or don't like about these pieces I love to hear from you and I do reply to just about every single comment so please engage with us I'm gonna jump right in. And before anything else, um, I'm sorry about the video quality. These are high gloss pieces. They're extremely reflective and it's really hard to film them properly. I've got as good as I can get and I've reduced glare and refractions as much as possible, but I do apologize if it doesn't come through just perfectly. One of the things I love to do here at SkyFi Audio is find gems from a specific era that are often overlooked. And that's what uh, I've been doing in the last couple of months. I've been featuring videos from both Sony and Pioneer about the real gems within the lineups. And from the surface, they can all look very similar, but they're really not. Every piece is extremely different. For example, this PD-93 CD player is spectacular on the inside. You'd never know it. It's very plain looking on the outside, and there are plenty of other Pioneers that look just like this. But this is an amazing piece. And so we've assembled here the rest of what we thought was the best from Pioneer Elite. These manufactured, um, late late 80s early 90s into the mid 90s and it was a great time for hi-fi i love that period in in japanese specifically hi-fi equipment the manufacturer sony pioneer techniques were battling it out they were spending tremendous amount of money into engineering designing and manufacturing pieces and in some instances i bet they lost money there are certain sony cd players where they just could not have made any money on them this was expensive stuff. Uh, the Pioneer PD-93, for example, uh, a chap on, on YouTube commented that in the UK it was like 1,800 pounds or something crazy. Oh no, uh, he gave me the, the MSRP in pounds. I translated over to dollars and like this CD player would have been about four grand today. Not crazy crazy, but for consumer electronics, for like a mainstream brand, that was pretty high. And uh, there are a lot of Sony pieces that fit very close to this uh, the 77 ESD uh, preamp I just did there's a 707 ESD CD player I'll link to all the sort of other pieces in this genre below and in, uh, in the information section below the video so you can watch other videos so the elite moniker I believe was exclusive to the US market but the sort of models there are just slightly for European and Japanese markets for example on the amplifier and the preamp I know they made just slight different models for the both foreign markets um, and a few other features or that differ but generally these uh, this elite line was a really good seller in the United States I worked for an installer here in New Jersey back when I was in college and he just could not sell enough of these things. They went out the door. We were installing a full elite system almost every single day. They hit a good price point. They look beautiful and they got great reviews. Um, I, I love this sort of like dark wood uh, finish, it's sort of like a dark rose wood. They've got a, a cool little gold inlay right between the panel and the CD player, the high gloss finish on the aluminum. So it's a great, great look. Um, I think I read somewhere that this fluorescent color display was exclusive also for the US market. It has a, a filter in front of the green fluorescent display that changes it to this orangey color. And I believe in Europe and Asia, they did not have that. So um, great looking stuff. Jumping right in, the PD-93, I did a full video on this, so I'm not gonna go too far, but this thing is a 40 pound monster made out of more copper than you can imagine beautifully laid out on the inside. The DAC section is extremely capable. The laser is very well made. There are no belts or anything to wear out on this CD player. So super highly recommended if you can find a, a PD-93. 
Now we're going to sell this as a set, so please don't ask me to break this up right now. We do not have the PD-93 available. You're going to have to scour eBay and other sites for it. This particular sample we've got is absolutely minty. There's, other than just a few fingerprints throughout, there's really nothing else that separates this from new. The display is nice and bright. The drawer is nice and responsive. Great, great unit. And you can kind of get a look at the honeycomb. If you look just underneath one of these, you can start to see the red copper below it in a really heavy honeycomb chassis. So that's where they get their weight from. Uh, Feature-wise, there's nothing notable on this CD player. It's pretty straightforward. We do have the ability to turn off the analog and digital sections, which I love. You can kind of quiet down the unit a bit by, if you're not using the digital output, by turning it off and vice versa on the analog. If you use this as a transport, you can turn off the analog or you can have them both on. That's really the only notable feature with it. It really comes from its build quality and uh, I do encourage you to reference the other video. All right, moving down to the tuner. An F93, so in line with the naming convention, PD93, F93, and it'll change as we go further down the rack. Great tuner. Um, one of the more notable features on it is its ability to assign an antenna to a station. I didn't confirm this myself, but my technician Ben said it was pretty cool. So I see here an antenna AB. Um, so um, you would use that, for example, if you lived in an area where you were maybe sandwiched between two different cities. You know, you've had uh, uh, great stations to the east and great stations to the west, and you didn't know how to really properly align your antenna to get them both equally. You would maybe do two antennas and aim them specifically uh, one east, one west, and then go through your stations and assign each of the station presets to that specific antenna. Super cool. I've never seen that before. I'm sure it exists. Someone's going to let me know in the comments, I suspect. But as you go through the presets, you can see that antenna A switches over to antenna B. Well, I just saw it a minute ago. There it is. So preset 4 has antenna B, and preset 5 has antenna A. Super cool feature. We've got a little door, like a lot of equipment had in this era, with a button to release it, where we've got the more complicated buttons and features that you wouldn't use on everyday basis. Not much else notable about it. Follows the same build quality as the 93, maybe just a step below, but a great match for the PD-93 CD player. Now the two below are 91s, and that's a little confusing. Uh, I searched online as much as I could, and no, they did not make a C91 preamp. So the top dog at the time to go with these two pieces would have been a C91. And same for the amplifier. They did not make an M93. M91 was their best piece and it matched to these other guys. So a little bit strange in terms of a naming convention, but if you know why, I'll, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, how come they abandoned that same numbering sequence and went to different pieces? Now the amp and the preamp go together, so it kind of makes sense, but you'd expect 93s available as well. So on the preamp, I understand there were many variations of this, maybe three or four, C90, C91 with some sort of uh, suffix on it, this particular preamp does video switching as well as audio, which is very common for the 90s. That was really the start of home theater for our U.S. market here. So a lot of these preamps had early home theater features in them. This one in particular just has uh, a bunch of video switching, both for S-Video and composite. You would never use that today. But nevertheless, the audio section or the analog section on the C91 is still remarkable. It's beautifully built as well. And I love the layout. Super elegant. It's my understanding that the different variations of this eliminated some of the features. Um, so one of them would have eliminated the S-video outputs, another one would have eliminated the video altogether, and that'd be the one to find. But I don't think those were available in the US market. I think this C91 was the only one of its variation, but certainly look for them. Uh, maybe a Japanese version of this without the video would be even a better piece than this, uh, just for simplicity's sakes since no one's going to really be using composite and S-Video switching at this point, there's no sense of having it inside. You could also potentially take one of these and just gut the video section out of it. That would be a really neat modification, which I've done on other CD players before. 
I understand it also has three transformers and a pretty cool layout. A little bit messier inside than the 93 when I saw a picture the other day, but I'm gonna do an internal video of the 91 as well. So if you subscribe, uh, you'll get a notification probably in the next couple of weeks when I do this a full, full review of the C91. Below it is an M91 amplifier. This is a 200 watt per channel beast and a beautiful piece. Aesthetically, it's killer. It has a gold uh, faceplate or sub faceplate. I think you saw before when I tuned in the station, uh, the VU meters move around. Let me see if I can get that back. There it is. So this is a fluorescent display. Um, and you can tell this unit hasn't been used. These are super, super bright and very responsive in great, great condition. Um, other things, it's got some really neat inputs. It's got a, a control amp, a CD direct, and a line direct. So if you wanted to feed your CD player right into this, you would hook it up to that input and bypass all the other stuff. And then you've got this sort of attenuator. So this could potentially be a one piece integrated for you if all you have is one source between volume and the selector, it'd be a cool, cool, simple system to have. Um, we've got phono uh, jack, I'm sorry, a headphone jack on an amplifier, that's rather unusual. And I'm just noticing now that the preamp doesn't have one. Well, right, if I go through all the hidden stuff in the preamp, I've got some video ins and outs and stuff, but I don't see phono. For some reason, I keep saying phono, but I really mean headphones. So no headphone jack on the preamp, and it looks like they moved it over to the amplifier, which is a neat place for it. And then your typical dual sets of speaker outputs and the ability to mute the display. Here's an illustration of how the meters react. and then the ability to turn them off completely. And this is nice, because fluorescent displays don't last forever. So um, it's nice to be able to turn it off and still use the amplifier without wearing them out. The back of the unit can look a little intimidating, but there's really nothing that complicated back here. Um, one of the things that is apparent on the CD player is the external mounting of the transformers, which is a really neat feature on this and the digital outputs controllable through the front. Here's analog and digital out. On the tuner, uh, the two antennas we discussed, A and B, are right here. And a set of fixed and variable outputs. On the preamp, we talked about the S-Video and the composite. So this is the video switching section that you probably would not use nowadays. But the audio board is completely separate and isolated, which is kind of nice. So across the top, we've got a capable phono input plus a plethora of other inputs and outputs, including uh, two tape loops. Some convenience outlets so we can turn things on and off from one spot. Love that. And then on the amplifier, a lot of inputs for an amplifier. Remember, we've got the control amp, the CD direct, the line direct, and the CD line output, which is a cascading output, as well as the ground. Uh, the ability to switch impedance between 4, 6, 8, and 12 ohms for each of the grouping of outputs and not much else. Disappointingly, um, captive power cords of pretty low quality. Uh, it's not gonna affect the sound, but it would have been nice at this level to have had a removable power cords. So the CD player uses a really high gauge on their CD player. Uh, funny enough, they used a higher gauge power cord on the CD player than they did on the amplifier. Now mind you, this is, ac this is fine. This gauge was calculated for that power draw and I wouldn't be concerned at all. So that's it for the back of the unit. The remote is a universal affair. Pretty straightforward, but look at these buttons. I think I counted over 70 something buttons on this thing. So the ability to control all components, except for the amplifier, obviously, there's really no need to do anything on the amp. Um, but this remote control can do the preamp, the CD player, and the tuner. Here you have it. The full stack from Pioneer Elite. This will become available on our website, skyfiaudio.com, this Friday. Um, if you see a dollar or zero dollars on it, it means it's already sold. And considering these videos are up for years and years, I suspect by the time you see this, this is not available anymore. But nevertheless, I thought I'd share it. I hope you liked the video. 
I hope you have the same passion towards vintage stuff from the 80s and 90s as I do. Do share your system. Let us know what you're into. And please subscribe. Thanks for watching.